Namaste. Thank you for joining us this Sunday morning. I hope you're having a good weekend. We're just going to do a nice gentle flow today to get our bodies moving and stretch them. So we're going to start standing up. So if you've got yourself all comfy on the mat and you're sitting down, stand up. <laughs> and I'm just going to teach you a little sequence. Um, we call it Circle of Joy, which sounds very poetic. Um, but basically we work with the movement, we're going to do it a few times. So as we inhale, we bring our hands up. And as we exhale, our hands are coming down. And then, you don't need to turn around, I'm just showing you. Just either hold elbows, or if you can, bring your hands to reverse prayer. So either or. And then we're going to bring our hands back to prayer and take a breath out. So we're going to go inhale. Exhale. Opening up the shoulders, holding elbows or hands. Inhale, hands to prayer. Exhale. So this is just our centering exercise. We inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. I'll do it the other way. Inhale. Flying 
and you'll like this one. So we're balancing again, we're taking our right foot over onto our left thigh and just coming down into a squat position. So even more of a hip opener here. And just take a couple of breaths. So my right foot is flexed. And what that does is just protects this right knee and makes sure that the knee's not twisting. We're going to take one more breath here. And then as we exhale, just pushing all the way up. And then coming down into tree on the other side. So just lifting the left leg up and popping into the side of the right leg. So we make sure that the left foot isn't on the knee. That knee is opening out to the side. And we're growing an inch. Think about just pulling up and breathing out. We're now going to step back into our warrior one. So we just bring our left hand behind, our left foot behind us. Not our left hand, that's here in the air. And sink down into warrior. So again, just watch that lower back. Just feel really grounded here as we exhale. We're bringing our body forward a little bit. On the next exhale, just swinging the hands. And then inhale, bringing them up behind the, beside the ears. And swoop down as we exhale. Inhale, bring them up one more time. And then we're coming up to our flying pigeon. So a big push off. So we're balancing on that right foot again. Flex the left foot and just sink down into our squat here. So a bigger hip opener. Tree is our beginner hip opener. And then this flying pigeon, when we squat down a little bit, so you'll notice my right knee is bent, our, my standing leg is bent. And I'm just going to take a breath, inhale, and exhale. And then pushing up, and bring the hands into our warrior two position. So stepping back this time on the right foot, but now my hips are open, so I've got my left knee coming to the left hand side of the mat. Good, inhale, exhale, just sink it down here. So just feel the stretch in the groin here. Next time I exhale, I'm just coming forward into this Parsvokanasana pose. So this means that the bottom of my left arm comes onto my left thigh and I'm looking up at the fingers of my right hand. So feeling this nice big stretch all the way through the right side body. I'm going to start that little wave again. As I exhale, take that right hand down. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. So walk with the breath. Really important. And then we're just going to find our high plank. So windmill the arms and step all the way back into high plank position. Just a little bit of strength work. Why not while we're here? As we inhale, lift up the right foot, exhale, pop it down, and then the left foot rises, and pop it down. One more each side. We can do this easy peasy. And then chaturanga down. So just keep those elbows tight into the body and lower the body down, swooping through. Exhale, chin to the mat, and find our down dog. And just pad out the feet. Just notice if there's any change now between the right leg and the left leg. I'm going to take a big breath and just push those heels down to the ground. Just finding that nice big stretch. Why don't we do a little hop if we rather mix it up rather than walking forward. So look to the hands, rise up onto the toes, bend the knees, but keep the hips high and jump forward. Inhale, half rise, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, pushing the floor away, and then stepping back into warrior two with the left leg, just to do that little sequence on the other side. Inhale and exhale. So sometimes in vinyasa flow, we do everything from dog, but we don't need to. We are working from tadasana or mountain pose. Just relax those shoulders. And as I exhale, coming into parasvakanasana. So looking up at the fingers of the left hand this time. And really spinning the ribcage up to the sky. Taking a really big breath into the left lung. And then as I exhale, just sweeping that left hand down. Inhale, bringing it up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. Really embodying the breath. And then windmill the hands, so we're just framing that 
right foot and stepping all the way back. Let's do our plank, walking the plank on the other side. So left leg raises his own tail, exhale, hop it down, and then the right. One more each side. Inhale, exhale. This session is sponsored by inhale, exhale. And then let's chatter out you down. Keep those elbows in. Inhale, swooping up, and then finding our down dog again. And just padding your feet. I'm a big fan of a foot pad. It just gets into the lower back. If you swing your hips, channel your inner feminine yogi, and then push the heels down to the ground. Make sure we're looking back to the knees. That really stretches through the neck muscles. Maybe we can even look at the tummy. And then we either walk forward, or if you want to try a little hop, rise up onto the toes, bend the knees, the legs forward. Inhale, stretch those hamstrings. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, pushing the floor away. And then coming back into prayer. Good. And this time, stepping back on the right leg, but we're going to have our toes, uh, be on our toes at the back. So we've done warrior one, warrior two, and then this is a runner's lunge, Anahatasana pose. Anahata is the heart chakra here. So we're just going to work on that. Think about moving this heart space up to the sky. So just taking the arms behind me, supporting the lower back. And just finding a little, some people call this a back bend. In yoga, we call that a chest opener. Taking a breath. As I exhale, just coming back to the midpoint, bring my hands to prayer. And then we're going to balance and twist to so the top of my right arm is going onto the left thigh and just twisting my body round. Inhale, exhale. Particularly good if you're a rugby player, this you're really always passing back. We're using this loading of yoga to make sure we don't lose the moves of rugby. And then as I exhale, just bring the hands back to the mat, but inside the left leg, just so I can move the left foot out to the side and come into a really deep hip stretch. So the back knee can go down onto the ground, that's fine. Or we can work in a stretch and strength position with the knee risen. So it's up to you both for getting this big stretch. If you want to take it up the gear, we can just put our right elbow down on the floor, maybe even the left elbow. But if that's not for you today, that's okay, we just stay here. Maybe this is a step too far, and we're in a, a lunge position, position. That works as well, but we're going to take one more breath. Inhale, and exhale. Good. And then from here, we're just going to come back into our all four position and do some cat crowns. We haven't done these today, so let's work through the spine. Inhale, and exhale. Just notice that there's any difference, the right side to the left side. There may be, there may not. And then from here, we're just going to step forward, our right foot and then our left foot, and roll up through the spine. So let's just straighten the knees first of all, come into a nice forward fold, feel that hamstring stretch, and then bend the knees a little and roll up through the body. So another way just to keep working the spine, roll back the shoulders, good. Take a step forward and we'll do that sequence on the other side. So my left foot is shooting all the way back now. So again, in our Anahatasana, we want to make sure that our knee is stacked over the ankle. So if we're in this pose, just move it back. And we may not be as far back, we may be here and that's a big enough stretch in the hip flexor. That's fine, no problem, I'll join you. Let's take our hands behind us, let's support the lower back and just look up to the ceiling. Inhaling and exhaling. And crucially here, my shoulder blades are coming in to meet each other. If we can take a deeper lunge, that's great. One more breath. And then as I exhale, we'll bring the body up, bringing the hands to prayer, and then we'll find that twist. So let's take the top of the left arm onto the right thigh. I'm just going to step this back, 
test my balance and just push down with the right arm, the right hand, so you're twisting the body around more. So if you find yourself really wobbly in this position, feel free to put the back knee down. Or if that doesn't work, get a wider base. Maybe we take the left foot further out to the left hand side of the mat. Take a breath. And then as I exhale, we're going to come up to the midpoint and then bring both hands inside the right foot. And we're just heel toeing the right foot out now and finding our lizard pose, really good for opening the hips. So again, plenty of options for you to work. So where we're having this stretch is in this groin area here. Feel free to put that back knee down. If you want to take it up in here, more we put our left elbow on the floor, maybe our right elbow. Or maybe we look at that and think, ha ha, not today, in which case that's fine. Wherever we are, we may well have a rounded spine. See if we can just shine the heart space forward. We're working on Anahatasana, so this heart space. Just move that forward and breathe. Another way to put this is think about dropping the pelvis down. Maybe the pelvis is raised and the back is arched. Think about dropping that pelvis down and you'll just deepen that stretch. Wherever you are, take a breath. And then we're going to take the weight to our hands again and just bring that knee back. That's the fun bit sometimes. And do a few more cat pounds. Just find that movement in the spine. Inhaling and exhaling. This should feel really delicious. It's really nice to do some cat pounds. And we do it with the breath. So we inhale and exhale. And then let's find a child's pose. So just bring our bottom back to our heels and stretch the hands out. We're making this a really active child's pose. So sometimes we do this in restore, but today we're active with it. So I'm up on the fingertips here, which is why I'm doing my jazz hands. I'm up on the fingertips, so I raise the palms from the floor and it just gives me more space to drop the forehead and stretch through the shoulders. And again, inhale and exhale. And then come all the way back up to our all fours. We're going to try pigeon pose. So taking this right knee, so I put my hands out to either side of the mat. See if we can get the right knee behind the right wrist. And once we've done that, I'm going to push through my hands to slide the body back. So we're just on the hip, opening the hip again. Lots of hip releases today. And see if you can sit upright like I'm doing. This might not be possible, it depends on the lower back. If this is too much, just bring the body forward. And if this isn't working for us at all, if you're thinking, how the heck, or it's really painful, I'm going to give you an alteration in a moment. But if that's easy, we can take the hands to a different level, maybe to the sides, maybe up and looking up. We're going to take a few breaths. If you're struggling with pigeon, we're going to do it another way. We're just going to do that figure four balance that we've done before, the balance stretch we've done before. So just working on the right and either have the left foot on the floor or lace the hands through behind the thigh and lift this uh, left leg up so you're pushing the right knee away. So it's the same stretch, just two ways. So let me come back to Pigeon. And we're just taking that breath. Maybe we're here. Maybe our hands are in cactus. Maybe we're here. Wherever we are, take a breath. And then if we're in our, if we're on our back, just straighten the left leg. If we're um, in pigeon pose, see if we can bring our right hand in front of us, take our left hand behind, and just lift the left foot into the left hand. Now you might be looking at this left foot and thinking, ha ha, not today, but give it a go. And then bend that left arm and just draw the heel into the bottom. So you're really stretching through the quad muscles. Nice big breath here. And maybe another. So whichever pose you're in, give a moment's thought to the breathing. Make sure you're filling the lungs and emptying the lungs. 
Let's leave that foot behind. Let's tuck the, tuck the toe under, the left toe. And as this is the thumb bit, let's come back into our down dog position. And you might want to shake out that right foot. If you've been a pigeon, we need to get the blood back to our uh, leg. And then we're just going to come down onto our hands and knees again. Take the hands wide out to each side of the mat. And we're going to bring the left knee behind the left wrist. And then push through the hands so I'm sliding the body back over my left hip. So again, if this isn't working for you, if you're kind of thinking, hold on, I'm miles off the floor, I'm uncomfortable, let's take the adaptation. So you keep the right foot on the floor and just cross the left foot over the right thigh and push that right knee, sorry, that left knee away. Maybe we can lift the foot off the floor, maybe we straighten the leg. So we're just coming into a hip stretch or flex. Either way. Maybe the hands, if we're in pigeon, are in, so they're in cactus. Maybe we're looking up. Maybe the body is done. Work at the level where there's no pain. So if you're thinking I'm giving you too many levels today, where are we, and you're wondering which one is right for you, if you're not breathing properly, if it's not possible for you to breathe comfortably, take it down a level. And then from here, if we want, we take our left hand into the centre of the mat, look behind us, and that right foot is going to magically pop into our right hand, bending the right elbow, just drawing the heel in. Nice big inhale. Exhale. So we're getting this lovely quad stretch. There's quite a lot going on here biodynamically, so don't worry if this is a bridge too far this morning. We can always just look behind us. I'm going to fill the lungs. Inhale. Exhale. Pop that foot down. Let's tuck the toes under and swing back into down dog. Really pad the feet. And again, we might need to shake that left leg out. And then push the heels down. Do you feel a difference in the body? Do you feel that the heels are a little further to the floor as they were than they were before? Take a couple of breaths. Really good to stretch the whole back line of the body. Keeping ourselves fit and supple. And then as we exhale, just drop the knees to the mat. And we're going to swing right onto our bottom. And come to lying down. Hooray, they say. Just bring the right knee in and just circle the ankle. And then the left knee. Just bring that in and give that ankle a bit of a circle. And then we're going to take both knees over to the right hand side. Take the head over the left shoulder. And just sigh it up. Inhaling. Exhaling. And just notice how that feels in our supine twist. And then we'll bring the knees up and over to the other side. Take the head over to the, the right hand side now and just breathe. And we're ready for our sabbatana. Well done. So lay the right leg out on the ground, lay the left leg out, and just turn the palms of the hands up. Just bring the eyes to and it's really key, as I say each week, to do this savasana and not skip the savasana step. So just make sure that our breathing now returns to normal. We're maybe controlling the breath throughout yoga practice, making sure that it's a little deeper, a little more full, a little more into the belly. But now you just want to return to the natural rhythm of breath. Not putting any pressure or limitations on yourself. Just being. Just as you are. And just check in with the body here. How it feels after practice. And just check in with the mind. How it feels after practice. How easy is it just to observe the breath, just watch it 
coming in and out. And if it is okay and you can do that, just give yourself a little mental fist pump because that's being fully present, fully in the moment. Thank you. Have a good day. Namaste.